tutorial one of Divine Right. These tutorials are going to cover um, some of the strategy of how to play Divine Right because we realize the instructions included in the game aren't that great, although I've recently added some new tips and some people have a lot of difficulty. It's a shame because we think it's a very good game and hopefully this will help you up a little bit. So the first thing I'm going to do is click on my Ducal Camp, go over a little bit of how the economy works. So as you can see here, I currently have a population of 50 in the Ducal Camp with a maximum population of 50. Of those 50 theoretical uh, inhabitants, all of them are focused on producing food right now. That's why the bar is full. And there is nothing for the bar for material gold. I'm not producing either of those. This may seem okay. I mean, I don't have any troops yet, so I don't have any material or gold expenses. But having everyone focused on food when I'm already at the unit max, 50 out of 50, or the population max, doesn't do me any good. So I'm going to want to change that before I start the next turn. But I'm also going to want to get some units to start the game. So let me work on that. I go to my unit recruit. One of the things that people definitely want to do, I mean, this is a fantasy game, is you want to get some heavy armor, you want to get a mounted unit. This is just a massive knight, really strong, really powerful, great defense, decently fast. But you know what? At the beginning of the game, you just simply can't afford it. It costs 348 gold. I have 210 and costs maintenance each turn of 98 material. Uh, even if I put everybody on material right now with a castle my size, there's no way I could support it. So instead, we're going to go the other route. Uh, we are going to build some cheap units to go out and see what's going on. So what I'm going to do first is I've gotten rid of all the armor. And I'm going to go to a pikeman, bonus against mounted units. And as you can see, he costs 12 gold and a maintenance of two. So that seems very reasonable for me right now. I'm going to recruit him. And I'm also going to recruit someone to try to build a new castle for me. So in order to do that, I need to pick work crew, yes. Now this unit can build a castle. I'm going to try to give him a little armor simply because, um, well, it really helps when the castle is being attacked. Their armor and weapons are inherited. And I'm going to go, I'll probably go another pike. So again, a bonus against mounted units. He's a lot more expensive, but he's going to build me a new castle. So ultimately it's worth it if he doesn't get killed. Recruit him. Now I'll go back into my castle. Um, as we all know, since we just built a couple units, we need to get some materials built. So I'm going to go up there. Five growth is good. I'd like that, but I also want to get a little bit of gold. Not necessarily a lot, but a little. So I'm going to have it set up like this this turn. I'm not going to upgrade the castle. Even though I have enough money, I'm not going to worry about a castle focus yet. Although, if you're interested, um, Early in the game, the farming castle focus is awesome because it drives your, your growth. You need to have fewer people working on the farms to grow your population, and that ultimately will help a lot. So let me end the turn. As you can see, I can see a lot more of the map now because I have a couple units out there. And I'm going to start walking around with my pikemen. And I guess I'll just go over there. Really, he's just exploring. I'm hoping to find the enemy. Um, and because he has light armor, decent movement, he can see a lot. A mounted unit would be able to see more, but I don't really want to spend the money on that yet. And this gentleman is my castle builder. So what I want to do with him is try to find a place to build a castle. I'm going to go back and look at my economy again. Last turn, I had a little bit more material than I needed, and I produced a little bit of extra gold. So not bad, but you know that gold didn't help me much, so I'm going to move that person back to growth because I'd really like to get this population as high as possible. Let's go another turn. Still haven't seen anything of the enemy, which is good and bad, I guess. Um, I'm going to move my builder one more. Now he's gotten far enough away from his from the primary castle, so there's no um, zone of population, if you will, and I'm going to build a new castle. And with my other unit, I'm going to keep exploring, hoping to spot something. With this new castle, I'm not going to do anything yet because I really want the population to grow. Right now it's very small, only 15 people. I'm going to take a look and see my overall economy again. I'm still producing a little bit more in the way of materials than I need. Uh, so um, since if I drop it down any, it's going to drop a lot. Let me test that. 
drops to nine. Um, that will put me in the negative. I don't want to go in the negative, so I'm going to go a little bit more. And I'm going to try to spend it by building another unit. Again, another relatively light unit that doesn't have a high maintenance cost. I'm going to go with a Morning Star because I know that I have enough material to do it. And he's also good should I ever find a castle. They have a bonus against castles. Aha! The enemy. So what I'm going to try to do now is position myself to fight the enemy. My man actually has a decent advantage against those guys because <clears throat> I have a pike. Pikes are good against horses. So I'll go there and actually wiped him out. I'm going to actually I'm going to increase his attack. I'll put all five points in that. And now I've spotted one of his castles too, which is good. Now, I, I'm going to want to get into a defensive position if I can. I'd like to be in the mountains because they have the best defensive bonus, but it's probably not going to happen. Well, it's definitely not going to happen. I don't have enough movement points. But I will go into the forest. Hopefully that will help me. Now, I need to start moving the rest of my troops, well, my other troop, up. So I'm going to move him to protect a second castle. Take a look at my economy. As you can see, as my economy grows, the same slider position produces more material because it's really based on the proportion of your population doing something and your size of your population. That's key to remember. I mean, ultimately, if you can't get your economy going, you're not going to be able to, to support a large army and, and pursue your war aims. What I'm going to do is take a little bit out of my population, get a little more gold, because that actually would tap me up at 50 out of 50. But I think I want to build another unit as well. I'm fighting horses with short swords. So there are a couple different things I could I could do. But what I'm actually going to do is go for a longbow. Because their units don't have a lot of armor either. And the longbowman might have some good luck with them. My second city is still trying to grow. But I know I'm now negative in material. So I'm just going to pull off a little bit and start producing a little more material. Now I'm going to end this tutorial here. Hopefully it's helped a little and I will continue this game in the second tutorial. Thank you.